How are we doing YouTube? It's your friendly gamer Smart in today here. Today we're going to do a head-on comparison of all our Queen range weapons. So that's a Velocitus, the Corvette, and of course the Imperator. So we're gonna quickly have a look at the build. I'm gonna jump into some gameplay really fast. So this is a no former build for the Velocitus. Now to be fair, I have put in a former on both the Corvette as well as Imperator, but I'm gonna mod it such that I'm assuming I haven't put a former in. So the former I put in the Corvette is obviously the V polarity. So this is obviously the ability to achieve without a former. Of course, I do have seven points remaining, which you can put in, I guess, a unmodded mod. But for the purpose of this demonstration, we won't bother with that. And finally, for the Imperator, same story. I put in a former, but we're gonna mod it as if we haven't used a former, which is of course the V polarity here. Now, to be fair, all the other builds for the other weapons is this. The Imperator can benefit from another, I guess, damage elemental mod, even with Auto Forma, simply because it comes with a base V polarity, which is quite useful on something like Automatic Trigger as well as Dual Rounds. Automatic Trigger is 15 points at max, Dual Rounds is 11 points at max. Now, before I talk about anything else, I want to talk about how practical these weapons are as well as usage. So we're back in Callus Uranus Interception. All demos will be shown on this particular map node. So first off, we have the Velocitus. So Velocitus have two firing modes. Obviously, you can just do trigger happy. So just continue to click your right mouse button to fire. Or you can charge. Charge does give that additional damage boost. As far as the Velocitus goes, I actually, from what I can see so far, I recommend not using the charge when you have mass enemies, which is what you typically see in Interception. The only time that charge is really, I guess, justified is when you have an enemy that's literally about a thousand meters apart and you want to just one-shot it and that's when you want to do a charge attack. Now, of course, it's a single potato on here. It's a build I just shown you guys, so there's no forma. And as you can see, we are pretty much one-shotting these enemies with charge. And when we're not charging, we can pretty much one-shot basic enemies, but with the more, I guess, the dragons or the more heavier enemies, we do need a couple shots. Now when this weapon first got released, there was a lot of bugs to do with, I guess, accuracy and as well as aiming. So we are at 15.3.3 and it's much better now. So now we'll jump into the Imperador. The Imperador was of course the first weapon you get and it's honestly, I would say the best thus far. It has pretty much infinite range, or at least it has the thousand also meter range which is practically all you need any longer you lose the accuracy anyway it is a I guess Brayton like weapon so it's rapid firing ish and it does decent damage one thing that makes Arcwing weapons in general much better is that ammo recharge so you can afford to put things like your speed trigger equivalent so that's your automatic trigger to have that much higher fire rate which is just a 45% increase, but it does translate to much higher DPS. This weapon is all-purpose, it's good for short range as well as long range, and as you can see, the build I've shown here is it can be achieved with no former, and it's pretty decent versus light enemies as well as your heavy enemies such as your Ogma. Lastly, we have the core vest. So 15.3.3 did fix the core vest to allow a charged benefit. The core vest arguably is the weapon I like the least, assuming the velocity just doesn't bug. The reason is the Corvette is a shotgun equivalent, so if you think of the Imperator as a Brayton, you can think of the Corvette as something like the Strong Wraith. Unfortunately with Arcwing, that's a different story than in general gameplay, because one, we don't have enemies that strong at baseline. So we don't actually need a, I guess, heavy shotgun to do point-blank attack. Secondly, because Arcwing missions have extreme range, and with the damage fall that's inherited to all shotguns, the Corvettes do fall off at longer range, not to mention the pallet spread, it's just not practical at long range. At short range is good, yes, but hey, there's melee weapons. Melee weapon in Arcwing is extremely strong with auto-targeting, it's just way OP than anything else, and if you're on short range, why bother firing a gun when you can just melee them? Okay, so as usual, I've pretty much copy all the builds over here on Warframe Builder just to look at the damages basically. Now do keep in mind the damages are not that representative in real gameplay just because of one damage fall with things like the Corvettes, still bugs present with weapons like the Velocitus, and just generally you know we're not using optimal modding um, with obviously a bit more former you can do a bit more representative damage and we'll have a look at that as well. So to begin with, Velocitus. As I was saying when the 
weapon first got released, there's a lot of accuracy issues with this weapon. Now it doesn't happen a lot. It still happens, I would say, here and there, but most of the time it doesn't happen. So with a standard build, we got so 26.500 total damage, 3000 sustained DPS. Looking at the Corvettes, we're looking at much higher damage at 34 total damage, 3400 I should say, as well as 4400 sustained DPS. But again, at short range, that's what you get at long range, especially in Arcwing, you know, that pretty much goes down to one tenth of that because most of the pellets weren't actually even hit in long range. And we're looking at the Imperador, so total damage, we're looking at 420, and we're looking at sustained DPS of 800, sorry, 8500 with that particular one I've shown you guys. And of course, if we take out the Polar Magazine to match all the other weapons, we're more looking at, so slightly less, but still pretty decent. So, all these weapons are extremely different, and this is actually one of the reasons I really like comparing these weapons. Because if you have these kind of weapons in, say, a normal Warframe mission, so each have their applications. But in Arcwing, it's a different story. Because let's put it this way, in Arcwing, like I said with a melee review, you pretty much have Callus Uranus, which is the toughest Gwynir mission, and then you have the Sabotage on Neptune, which is the toughest Corpus mission. Now, the toughest Corpus mission is actually pretty easy, pretty simple, it's not really worth even mentioning. The All the other missions are, again, pretty basic, right? The only mission that provides a bit of a challenge for some players is really just the Callus Uranus. So that's why, for all my weapons, I use the Corrosive build, because that's what you use versus Gwynir. So to sum things up, Cor Corvass is probably the weapon I like the least out of the three, just because in Arcoin you get range, you know, up to 2,000 meters range at certain points. The damage fall off as well as the pellet spray just doesn't make shotguns such as Corvettes viable. The Velocitus, it's pretty decent. It has a, obviously, charge and a non-charge attack for short-ish range. So within 500 meters, I recommend using the non-charge so you can rapid fire and kill all enemies because, again, all Arcwing mission enemies, even at the highest level, which is you're looking at about 30-ish, which is wave 4, Callus Uranus, there's no reason to go above that. Um, this weapon is definitely can hold its own at that level, even without charge. When you are fighting enemies, such as at the end of the wave, you're trying to eliminate all remaining enemies, some of them may be up to a thousand meters apart, that's when you do want to do a charge attack because you want to one-shot them, and you don't want to have to, I guess, do too much RNG. And uh, finally, the Imperador, this is an all-purpose type weapon. This weapon is good for short-ish range as well as long range. It's very reliable and it does, again, give you that additional V polarity, which does help quite a bit. So between the Velocitus and the Imperator, I do have to say at this stage, without any former, the Imperator is better. With former, the Velocitus would be better. I'll show you that shortly, but just before that, I want to quickly mention, if you are very near IE, your weapons are about rank 0 to 10, the Corvass is actually really good, because it does have a much higher base damage than the other weapons, and when you're at very low rank and you don't have many mods, the initial you know huge damage boost is quite good with the Corvass, but this quickly falls off as you rank them up. Finally, we'll look at ultimate potential of these weapons. So first off, we have the Velocitor, so this is a max build with currently available mods. We do want to use a crit build, so we want to use Parallax Scope as well as Hollow Bullets, and we won't use one of the Elementals. Which Elemental you don't want to use is up to you, but generally a Corrosive Fire is quite good against Gwynir, so this is what I'm going to stick with. So we're looking at a total damage of about 5100, it's the same DPS of just under 5800. The Imperador, again, total damage, pretty basic, because it's a rapid firing weapon, 550. But we look at sustained DPS of well over 11,000, which is pretty impressive. And finally, we have the Corvass, we have a total damage of 6,100 and a sustained DPS of 8,000. So from this, this pretty much justifies each role that these weapons take. So Corvette shotgun, it has high total damage, not as impressive as the same DPS, with a weapon such as Imperator, so a rapid firing, a, I guess, machine gun type, low total damage, but due to its high fire rate, it does have very impressive sustained DPS. And for something like the Velocitor, you're looking at a, I guess, sniper-ish weapon. It has pretty comparable, so similar total damage and sustained DPS. So again, the Velocitors, we're using a crit build with the Imperator as well as the Corvettes, we're using a max damage build. We're putting in Parallax Scope at the end just because, well, there are no other mods, right? And you want to op 
obviously optimize your crit chance over your hollow bullets, which is crit damage. But hey, with a base, you know, crit so low, it's hardly noticeable. But that's the build uh, you basically want to achieve. And in conclusion, let's put things into perspective. So Arcwing Guns, we got V for Velocitus, I for Imperator, and C for Corvettes. Now for low level speed kills, so that is pretty much your, I guess, Earth Interception, or your Venus Exterminate type missions, where we're looking at enemies less than level 10. The Velocitus is not very impressive, I mean it fires, it's semi-automatic, there's really no reason to charge, because it's one shot anyway. It takes a while. Same with the Corvettes, it's short range, it's you know, you can charge it, but there's no need because you're going to one-shot enemy it's anyway, and it's just a shotgun, which is not practical at arc wings anyway. The Imperador with its rapid firing, even low damage, but because enemies are low level, you can one-shot them anyway, so extremely high rate of fire eliminates them by far the fastest, so it basically gets a 9. Now, do keep in mind, guys, this rating is based on gameplay currently. What that means is, is we only got three guns to compare, and the highest level of gameplay is pretty much 32-ish, which is on Callus Uranus, wait for interception. So for high level gameplay, the Velocitus gets a 6 because it can charge, it has high damage potential. I'm giving it a 6 instead of a much higher number just because here and there is still bugs. Once all the bugs get sorted, it probably deserves a much higher number. The Imperador is an 8, just because yes, it's low total damage, but it's the same DPS, it's extremely impressive, and with virtually unlimited ammo, you're, there's no harm by having a fast rate of fire. The Corvette, I give it a 3, despite it having quite a decent total damage, as well as a passable, sustainable DPS because of damage fall off, as well as pallet spread, you know, it's just hard to get nice and close and personal with those high level enemies and not risking death. And once you are close and personal, why bother using the Corvettes when you can just use your Wraith Burn or another melee to hammer them out. AoE potential, hands down, none of them have any AoE potential. You know, despite the Corvettes being a shotgun and has spread with Arcwing scales, you know, the spread is not really present unless you are literally firing at a bunch of enemy group below an interception tower. That kind of you know, spread doesn't really help at all. But the Imperator, which is rate of fire, which is quite high, it can quite literally kill multiple enemies within a few seconds. So it has okay crowd control, even though none of them really have any practical AoE. So subjective factor. Now, the Velocitus, like I was saying, when it was first released, it had a lot of bugs, and I didn't really put on my potato unless I think about level 20. So it was pretty much useless for the entire trip. At the end, it was okay, but to be honest, it just isn't that great. The Imperator is the, I guess, go-to gun. It is, again, decent, practical in every situation, and it was fun leveling up. Even though most of the time, melee does surpass it, it definitely helps you know, eliminate that final one or two enemies that's about 500 to 1,000 meters away in your interception missions. The Corvette, it's okay when you first got it because of its high, you know, innate damage, but as you level up, it just falls off below all these other guns, especially when you have a potato and the formas in it, so overall I give it a 2. Now finally, so Velocitus 3.5, Imperator 7.25, Corvette 2.75. Did I give the Imperator a much higher score than I deserve? Probably, but that's only because the other two guns just are so crap right now. I do have to admit, once you know you do max build with them, especially once all the bugs with the Velocitus get rolled over, it is quite possible the Velocitus will be better than the Imperador. It's you know at high level gameplay definitely, but at this stage we need multiple things. So one, all bugs sort of is Velocitus. We need obviously a max build, and finally and perhaps the most important, we need actual high level gameplay. High level play that's actually you know worth your while. You get remunerated for it. You get good rewards for it. But until then. The Velocitus is just not up there. And of course, we're actually dividing it by 4 here, not 5. Alright guys, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers!